Welcome back to Cradle to Grave R. My name is Mark Jengrass. Today, we're gonna to talk about inner join, outer join, left join, and right joins. So with that being said, stay tuned. Okay, so let me start off by creating a couple data frames. And I think you should have some practice with this already, but df1, we're gonna set equal to just some random data frame, so data.frame. And we'll start that with some sort of ID in one column. So we're gonna say the ID is equal to, and we'll just make that a, a random uh, numeric. So I'm gonna say one through five. And then we'll add something in there like a name or something. So name is equal to, and I'll just make up some names real quick. Um, and one more, AJ. So we have five IDs and five names. If I do control enter, you could see on the top right, my object DF1 has been created, five observations of two variables. Click on that. Now I notice there's five observations, so the rows do match the ID. That's just a coincidence. The ID is equal to one, two, three, four, five, and then you have a name. So ID and name only. Now let's create another data frame called DF2, or we can call it DF right, DF left. It doesn't matter what you call them, just know that they're two different data frames is equal to another data frame. So follow me along here. Let's, uh, let's just to show you that we don't need to put the ID in the same column or anything like that to match these two data frames up when we do our merges. So let's go ahead and just say, hey, city, city value is equal to, and we'll just create some random cities. Uh, let's say, hey, rule, Boston, DC, uh, Rapid City, one, two, three, four, sounds good. Four of them sounds good, comma. And then now we're gonna create something called the ID here as well, and they're gonna match. Um, well, the name ID matches the name of DF1's per, um, first column ID. So we'll just call this, um, but we're not gonna make them match perfectly, we just wanna match a few of them. So since there's four entries, you know, Haverhill, Boston, DC, Rapid City, we're gonna do four, but we're gonna start the ID in at say, the number three, two, seven. That gives us four. So control enter on that. Error, where's my error? Hmm. Do, 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 do. Different number, three, four, five, six, seven. That's five, so three to six. Sorry about that. So there we go. So three to six, that's, now let's just take a quick look at that. Right now, DF2, you can see in the left-hand corner, we have four cities and four unique identifiers. In this case, they're unique, so three, four, five, and six, they don't quite match up with one, two, three, four, five over here in the DF1. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a couple different merges and I'll show you the differences. Now, if you wanna save the merged file, you can do something like DF you know, three and save it into some merge function, but we're not gonna save these. I don't have any use to save it. I'm just gonna show you down below. So let me uh, clear the entries here. Let's just type in a merge here. So this first one we're gonna do is a inner join. So if I hit tab now, it shows X and Y. The X position, we're gonna put DF1. So I like to call it the left-hand side. If I'm looking at two tables side by side, the left-hand side is DF1, the right-hand side is DF2. But in this case, you might wanna think of, think of them as X and Y variables, it doesn't really matter. So by default, if I do this, if I hit enter, you're gonna see that down at the bottom left here, you'll see that I have David, Leah, and AJ, Haverhill, Boston, and DC. There's no NAs, there's only three entries, yet there was five observations here and four there, because only three of them paired up with that ID um, identifier. So um, this is bad programming practice, though, to not explicitly say what the unique identifier is that, that connects two tables together. Um, R will try to say, hey, ID equals ID in both data frames, they must be the same. But to get away from any programming errors, because what if you had multiple types of IDs in the same tables, you could see where there's some confusion and, and you don't want R to do something that you didn't tell it to do explicitly. So we'll do comma and we'll just say the word by, by equals, and we'll just type in ID. And that'll guarantee, so if I do it again, it'll guarantee you that it uses ID to match those up. It's just a better programming practice. 
The next one we'll do is an outer join. So we'll do merge and we'll do the same thing, df1, comma, df2, comma. Now when I say outer, we're gonna still say by equals ID because the same concept applies, but this time we're gonna say all equals true. So we want an answer for everything regardless if it finds something or not. Watch the difference. In fact, I'll clear this down here first. I'm sorry, by equals ID. I have the little X in there, I'm not sure what that is. Now you notice there's six entries total. So there was one and two, which didn't match up at all. See this NA and NA here? And then you had the three, four, five, and six, which did. But it did give us all possible entries and it just gave us NA values. So it merged them and it said, hey, we don't have an answer for these first two. They just don't exist. Because again, in DF2, you know, your ID start at three. There is no one and two, so it just did not exist. So that's what the, the um, outer join does. Now let me clear this and let's do another join. We'll do a left join. So in this case, we're gonna do a merge and the same exact thing applies. We have our data frames in these positions, the X position, the Y position, left and right, comma. Always do the by equals ID, it's just good programming practice. And this time we are going to do um, all dot X equals. And this, this way, uh, this will be a true or false. The X is the left hand side. So it is the DF underscore one. If it's in there, give me the result. If it's not, don't. I mean, give me, I'm sorry, give me all of the results for if it's in the left hand side, the X variable, which was one through five. So we have IDs one through five. And again, you'll notice that the NAs are in the first two um, rows, okay? So that's how you do the left-hand side or the left join. Now let's do a right join, which you can imagine it's something similar, except instead of all dot X, we do all dot Y equals true. And again, you're gonna have, so you have four entries because all the stuff on the right-hand side, DF2 is, is there, three, four, five, and six. Those are all of them. And you have one NA value for six because there's no six identifier in DF1. But because we said, give me everything on the right-hand side, you have it all. So you notice the difference. So learn the difference between inner, outer, left, and right joins. There's other joins out there, but I think these ones will get you by pretty close. Um, it's been a while since I've done any of these videos, so I hope that they are helpful still, and I hope that I still have an audience, and I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks.